Well, it turns out some people do care about football games. The first PlayStation football vid didn't get the 50 or so views I was worried it would get. The people are interested. So hey, it only makes sense to do some more. Fortunately, there's plenty of football games we've not looked at yet. We've got 10 more in this video, a healthy mix of PS1 and PS2, and a couple of games that people were interested in seeing me cover. So get settled, eat your pre-match orange, and kick some tone-deaf DJ's head in as we look back at some rather strange football games of yesteryear. Now undoubtedly the game that people most wanted to see me do in the follow-up was this, Namco's Libero Grande, a 1998 PS1 game by way of the arcades. Good thing too is it's always one I've been interested in playing. It's very different to most other football games in that you're in control of one player only. No switching, no nothing. Just you, the one player, doing your bit in the match, getting into position, calling for passes and so forth. So yes, it's the forerunner to FIFA's beer pro mode, only without the whole journey thing and having dialogue wheels in a bloody football game. Essentially, it's a 3D follow-up to an older Namco game for the NES called Top Striker, where you did the same thing. You can choose from a bunch of players, all of which are stand-ins for real-life ones. Klinsman, Zola, Zidane, Valderrama. They're mostly midfielders or forwards, so sadly you'll have to leave the goalies gloves in the locker. Even Maldini basically plays as a midfielder. I should know, because he's a beast and scored a hat-trick against me. The game itself though is undoubtedly more complex than any other footy game on the PS1, and it actually plays really well, better than I expected it to. There are tricky bits, you've got to get used to manual passing, which is amazing when it comes off, although it can be tough with just a D-pad. Surprisingly, the game's not compatible with Namco's signature twisty controller, the Negcon, which might have made the controls fantastic instead of merely good. Player movement is very realistic with the ball, meaning you actually have to anticipate a change in direction, and the players are solid. They actually properly crash into each other, which is quite nice for a PS1 title. The most annoying thing is your teammates, to be honest. If you've ever played a pro mode, you expect to be often calling for them to do passes or shots. Calling for tackles is a bit much, though. It seems like they don't have a mind of their own. I also think the default cam was a little too close in for my taste. Sometimes it can be hard to pick up the action. Other than that, though, this game is really good. A bit far ahead of its time, and later efforts by FIFA would certainly refine the formula, but Libero Grande is honestly an excellent forerunner. The football's good, there's a lot of impact out there on the field, and it actually does put you right into the action. It's a tad more expensive than most of these games, but still dirt cheap, and it's definitely recommended by me. And here's another highly requested title, Midway's Red Card, shown here on the PS2. It's a footy game with a difference. I think the cover, a recreation of Vinnie Jones crushing Gazza's ghoulies, says it all. It's a footy game with virtually no walls. The remarkably lenient ref will let anything go. Two-footed tackles, shoulder barges, drop kicks, headbutts, punches, you name it. All's fair in love and football, it seems. It's one of those concepts that seems brilliant when you shout it out loud, the sort of game a 13-year-old boy might want to make, but often such games are better in theory than they are in execution. But then this is Midway, the same folks who made Arch Rivals, Pigskin 621 AD, NBA Jam, NFL Blitz. They've got previous, in other words. There is a point to all the ridiculous fouling. The more vicious tackles you do and legs you break, the faster your special move meter charges, allowing you to pull off super shots and the like. This is an arcade game and should be treated as such. And good lord, it's fun to just do all these ridiculous moves. You've only got to be careful with them in and around the box. A whole bunch more tricks seal the deal and make Red Card into a pretty fun game. Good wholesome arcade football fun. There's even the cherry on top with one of the co-commentators being Chris Frickin' Kamara. Yep, erstwhile former centre mid and legendarily crap icon of British sports broadcasting Chris Kamara is here to tell you that everything you're doing is clean as a whistle. Firm, but clean. Red Card is a very good short blast type of game. The football's never going to be in depth enough to carry you through a lengthy session of it, but a couple of games are more than enough to satisfy. 
It's white in the tradition of all the Midway classics I just mentioned, and a nice dollop of arcade-tinged sports bloody violence. I picked the game up for 10p at CEX a while ago, and if you see it, either for this or the GameCube, it's a surefire bargain, even if you don't usually like football games. And speaking of Chris Kamawa, <laughs> yep, there's a Chris Kamawa footy game. It's unbelievable, Jeff! For the PS1, here's Chris Kamawa Street Soccer from 2000, a budget title. I mean, Jesus, this is a dream game almost. The moment I knew this game existed, I thought we would be meant for each other. It could have been the beginning of a beautiful friendship. But, well, it wasn't meant to be. It's, uh, yeah, it's bad. This is a very low budget game, the sort that looks like it was made for 10p. And it's street football, which can be good, but in this instance, it's just quite boring. The only real fun about it is the relentlessly chipper commentary which sadly isn't provided by Chris Kamara. Good pass! Bravo! Good goalkeeping! What a rocket! Too bad! It's showtime! That's the worst thing about it. Literally, Chris Kamara isn't even in the bloody game. It's just his name and nothing else. Out of the pit. Oh, and apparently Prague is in Norway according to this game. You have to think that if basic geography was too much for the makers of this game, then the quality of football is undoubtedly going to follow suit. It didn't take me long to find a whopping big goal zone, get into the byline and shoot in from that extreme wide position, score almost every time. And when you find something like that, yeah, it's not worth playing much more. It's like a poor man's Puma Street Soccer, and if you ever played that game, you know what sort of level of shite we're dealing with here. Still, street football can be done right. For an example of that, well, we need to go to EA. It's FIFA, but not as you know it. Okay, here's FIFA Street, a spin-off from regular old FIFA from the EA Sports Big Line, when every EA Sports game was extreme and Superstar by Saliva was thought to be a good choice as a theme song for a bloody golf game. But this one takes it up a notch. Seriously, I don't think you're ready for it. Are you sure you're ready? Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Roll it! Holy shit, how extreme do you feel? Don't you just feel so down and groovy and with the kids? It's like every Joe Gabonito advert punching you in the face while OG Loke from San Andreas MCs over everything. FIFA Street is all about the tricks, they're all open to you with a flick of the stick and it's all about game breakers and scoring with style and panache. To the point where it's actually a lot more fun and even challenging to hilariously muscle a loose ball in from a yard out in vintage 4th division fashion. Something about doing a kick over your head and into the goal from 20 yards out off a Rabona cross loses its charm after the 20th time you've done it. Pull that off in regular FIFA or Pro Evo and you'll be smiling for a week. The game doesn't get that the same feeling is a bit diluted when doing it is so easy. Don't get me wrong, FIFA Street is fun when it comes to gameplay, fast and furious and really good in bursts, but holy shit, everything is so forced, the presentation are grotesque feet for the eyes, all the touches clearly thrown in by marketing men in suits. Ugh. The MC in over the top of everything makes me pine for the days of ISS Pro and Scorchio. It all feels so artificial. It'd be great if it were just, you know, more laid back, like a friendly kickabout should be, you know? Even if everyone's doing crazy shit, doesn't mean it has to be so in your fucking face. Keep the scenery, stick a nice bit of Wiley or some proper hip hop over the top, and it'd be just fine. But this is EA, and that just won't do. So it has to be the game of a bloody Adidas advert. Take away all the crap, and it's alright. But, God it does try its best to make me hate it. And honestly, as far as arcade action goes, Red Card is a better game in every possible way. 
Not a bad showing, but I doubt I'll play it again. Well, after all that forced coolness, I think we need to tone things down a little bit. So here's a PS1 FMV of a cartoon Des Lynam taking a shit. And that can only mean one thing. It's IDOS's All-Star Soccer from 1997. A light-hearted look at the world of football. Do you know what that means? It means they got Alistair McGowan in to do impressions of people like John Motson, Eric Cantona, and not yet disgraced pedo Stuart Hall. Now let me tell you what I think of impressionists. Have you ever had anyone say to you, boy did you see that impressionist on the TV last night? They were hilarious. Or gee, I wish that this famous impressionist would come and perform in my town. No you haven't. Why? Well because impressionists are not funny. Impressionists are literally the least funny thing in the world. I hate impressionists with an unending, undying passion. If you want to get into comedy but you're not actually funny... And let me tell you something else. I think that any prick who decides to be an impressionist should be put to sleep now before they get a chance to fucking breed the bloody shit cunts. Fucking swan. Their cutty impressions of cunt people like their cock of the walk. Cock of the walk? Cunt of the walk more like. Scum. Absolute fucking wankers. Right, let's get on with the game. Leaving aside the awfulness of being a light-hearted look at football, the sort of thing you'd see on the back of a bloody Christmas gaffs DVD, this game is horrendous. I do sometimes wonder if some of these games are made by people who've actually watched a football match, and this is a game where I wonder if it was actually made by sentient beings. Because, holy shit, the baffling, awfully done 2D sprites that make you hearken for the days of the 32X, the fact that there isn't even a proper shoot button, the completely brainless goalies, harebrained switching, comical passing, literally nothing about the game working, slide tackling the ball into your own goal from outside the bloody area, and oh Christ, a picture based menu. I really miss those on the fucking Amiga. There's more brains required to navigate the menu than there is to play the bastard game. And there's Alistair bloody McGowan all over it. I almost feel bad actually, he's so clearly disinterested you could barely call these bloody fins impressions. I actually missed the MC from FIFA Street whilst I was playing this. I have to say that this is, indeed, a new low. The poorest excuse for a football game I have ever played, and I'm not just talking about PlayStation. I can't see anything beating this. At least I hope to God that's the case. Jeez, we're getting quite obscure now. Football Generation is a PS2 game from 2004 published by Midas, who also published Chris Kamara's Street Soccer, by the way. It's, um, kind of interesting. It is basically a generic football game. You've got some regular stadiums, a bunch of teams with completely made up player names, a bit of stock music. It's a total budget title, the sort of game that by 2004 was almost totally dying out. They were ten a penny back in the PS1 era when it was still easy to knock together a footy game on the cheap. But console games were getting more and more expensive, and I guess it made less sense to knock together a budget title like this and give it a physical release. Football Generation is one of the last of a dying breed, a compilation of things that just weren't going to cut it anymore. As far as the game itself goes, well it helps to take into account that it is a budget title, it would have been sold for like 20 quid if that. So, you know, don't expect great production. It's very jerky for a start, it doesn't move well at all. The commentary is almost nothing, the presentation utterly without flair, but the football is serviceable. It's okay. I didn't notice any total howlers, I didn't find any goal hotspots or anything like that. The silliest thing I could do was try to score with a header from a halfway line, which seemed as though it may well be possible, but I couldn't quite manage it. And hey, that sort of shit was hilarious in Olympic soccer. So the game is kind of rubbish, it's off-brand cola flavoured water mixed with Glenn's vodka, a low budget FIFA alike, but not rubbish in an awful way. More in the way where I can tell that the guys who made it tried hard with clearly very limited resources. Like a plucky team of part-timers trying to keep the score down against a premiership team. Football Generation is interesting partly because it's one of the last games of a sort that come the 360 generation you flat out don't see anymore, a casualty of the duopoly. 
I'm not sure if it's actually by the same folks who gave us Chris Kamara Street Soccer, but it is certainly a lot better than that. I think we need to up the glamour a bit after that one, and there's only one name that fits the bill. Beckham. In the PS2 era, David Beckham was the British superstar. Posh and Becks were virtually the royal family, every new hairstyle was copied by half the country, he was I believe the richest football player in the world, every fashion choice analysed punishingly in multi-page spreads, every kick for England, Man United and of course Real Madrid assessed and compared to one another in torturous detail. He was a media icon of icons, a odd position for someone who is, by all accounts, one of the nicest and most humble people you're ever likely to meet. So of course Beckham has his name on a footy game. Here's David Beckham Soccer from 2002 by Rage Software. Well, sort of. I really wanted to cover this game properly, but my PS3 does not like it. Not one little bit. So perhaps this is a good opportunity for a word of warning. The compatibility of old football games is not exactly great, either here on the PS3 or on emulators, say. It's better than you think it might be, but you can occasionally run into this sort of problem, and not necessarily just with low-end crap like this. You want to see how the almighty FIFA Road to World Cup 98, one of the best footy games ever, runs on my PS3? That's how it runs, and it broke my heart. Despite my system rejecting everything about this game, I managed to struggle my way into an actual match, and the two minutes I played were not exactly great with unresponsive controls and utterly worthless tackling, but then, what do you know, the game immediately crashed as soon as Australia scored. The most amusing things I can tell you about it is that from what I saw, David Beckham is literally the only licensed player in the entire game, which is something you'd usually see back in the early 90s, and the commentary team is Jonathan Pierce and Ron frickin' Atkinson, before that whole being recorded calling Marcel Desailly the N-word thing. Sadly, the Wonglish seemed to be lacking in this one. So while this game didn't exactly leave a good first impression, I can't rate it fairly, which is a shame as it is one of Rage Software's last titles. Perhaps it's better that way. But hopefully, in another video, I can make it up to them a little bit. I'm not through with you yet, Bex. Not by a long chalk. So let's move on. If one cheap footy title doesn't work, you can always go for another. So here's Taito's International League Soccer for the PS2. It's got Roy Keane on the front, so honestly I'm expecting some proper studs up take that broken legs out of this one. Alas, that's not what that we get. Just another rather crappy are. football game to be honest. Oh well, not had the best luck with our selection today, have we? International League Soccer does some really boneheaded fins. I find it so hard to follow play when the camera is constantly switching. It does it all the time and buggers up my spatial awareness something stupid. Secondly, holy shit, just listen to this fin. The keeper made a nice save there. He stumbles but just manages to keep the ball. I don't usually complain about this, but the audio, the sound effects, they're some of the worst I've ever heard. The commentary sounds like it was recorded off a phone, the game picks one chant and proceeds to loop it for a whole freaking half, and Christ, most of the time there isn't even a spot effect of a freaking ball being kicked. I mean there's bad audio, and then there's this. And lastly, it's possibly the slowest footy game I've seen so far. It's so unresponsive it makes three lines look like Pro Evo 4. Not that it's impossible to score, and your slow play will probably be rewarded, but ugh, it's like moving on a pitch that's made of rapidly set in cement. This game is quite, quite terrible, an absolute misery of an effort. Bring back football oh, champ. Oh, For our next game we're actually going to the big two again, sort of, to Konami land. I mean it's only fair seeing as we have had FIFA Street. But first, a condensed history of the other big franchise. ISS Pro on the PS1, the wonderful game with the partridge-esque commentary, is actually considered to be a game in the Pro Evolution series, or if you're Japanese, winning 11. International Superstar Soccer, the original game that started out on the SNES, is another series entirely and continued on, but until 2000 those games were exclusive to the Nintendo 64. Pro Evo was basically a PlayStation spin-off. 
Come the PS2 era though, both Pro Evo and ISS games were being released on the same console. It is sort of confusing, especially seeing as Pro Evo games were called ISS Pro Evolution at one point. The town wasn't big enough for the both of them, and only one could fly the Konami flag. And unsurprisingly, seeing as the PlayStation was its home, and it had a pretty good reputation by this point, Pro Evo won the match. And so we're going to have a look at International Superstar Soccer 3 from 2002, the last ISS game. While this game is okay, it's easy to see why it's the final ISS title. It looks nice, probably better than most every other game in this video, and the football isn't totally bad, but naturally you're going to compare it to Pro Evo, and against that game this is always going to be found wanting. The brilliance of the PS2 Pro Evos lies in that silky smooth flow. It was playing a more in-depth game of football than anyone else, and it seemed to be almost effortless. ISS is somewhere more in the middle. It doesn't seem to know if it wants to be a sim or an arcade game, what with the touches like going to a close-up of the action whenever you try to cut inside the box. Looks cute, but doesn't affect the gameplay one iota. And it just doesn't have the flow. The football's so much more awkward here, with bad pass selection, and a lot of your players seemingly not knowing what they're doing. It's not a bad footy game on its own terms, but compared to Pro Evo? Yeah. And it doesn't exactly do much to stand out from Pro Evo that's effective. And so ISS was just one more long one in footy title that hung up its boots in the PS2 era, although this one was for perfectly understandable reasons. Now our final title is something a bit different. It's sort of football, but definitely not as you know it, but I don't think there's any other way to cover it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Gaelic Games Football, the only Gaelic football game ever made. Probably. Now the best way to describe Gaelic football, if you're not aware, even if this is an oversimplification, is as a cross between football and rugby, where you can either kick or punch a round ball out of your hands, either into a traditional football goal, or between two very tall posts above them. Getting the ball in the actual goal scores more points. It's played with teams of 15, there is a goalie, and you can carry the ball, although you can't pick it up directly off the ground. The sport is very popular in Ireland and pretty much nowhere else aside from Irish diaspora. As you can imagine, the release of this game was a huge event over there. Finally, their favourite sport gets a game. It's one of, if not the biggest selling PS2 games in Ireland, and Christmas pre-orders for it even beat out the likes of Call of Duty. Unfortunately, not long after Christmas, the shelves were filled with returned copies of the game, because it's not very good. Playing this game is beyond frustrating. I don't know if it's because I don't know how the sport works, but I'm sure that the other players aren't supposed to just leave me alone while I try to tackle the other man, meaning that 99% of the time I take the ball off them and they retain possession. If there's some nuance I'm missing here, it sure as hell isn't explained. So that's how most of the game goes. Tackle player, they pick it up, tackle player, pick it up, tackle, pick up, and then they score. This is an experience I did not enjoy. And when in possession, <laughs> yeah, good luck. Obviously they'll turn over play every time, and that is if you don't lose the ball yourself due to the awful controls. I don't know, I kind of think it's germane to actually have a power bar displayed if you're using a power based hold the button down type of system. I don't know, I'm not a game designer or anything, but I think that's generally regarded as the thing to do. From what I can gather, Gaelic football is a pretty damn fast game as well. So why this plays so miserably slowly, I have no idea. So, on the whole, no, I don't think it's because I'm not au fait with the sport. This game is terrible. The commentary is occasionally silly though, tea and bananas and all that. But uh, yes, and frankly I think my opinion is bared out by the amount of copies returned by disappointed Irish fans, and articles from Irish folks saying how shite this game is. I don't think I'm missing out on a classic here. It is a bit sad though, the one chance that Irish people get to play one of their favourite sports in video game form, and it's a complete stinker. The guys responsible for this, IR Games, have also made games based on hurling and Australian Wolves football, and I dread to think on what they've done to both of those. Only one way to find out, is there? But that'll have to be another time. On the whole, the selection of games was pretty bloody Alan Hansen shocking this time out. It seemed to get worse and worse as time went on. 
And if you think that I've reached the bottom of the barrel yet? <laughs> well, I don't know, but chances are I probably haven't. Hopefully the next time we do a video on these old footy games, because believe me we will, I will actually manage to find some more decent ones to balance things out. For now, well, play Libero Grande and Red Card, maybe play FIFA Street if you can handle the bleeding wannabe coolness of it, and the rest can probably go straight in the bin. For now though, once again, from all of us here, it's goodbye. Thanks for watching another video about the glory of football on the PlayStation. If you liked this video then do consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, following me on Twitter and Facebook, and supporting me on Patreon. Right, here's the good old list of people to thank. Seth Robinson, Jason Leach, Horo Grizzly Bar, Ian Roberts, Drew Briggs, Grayfin Blackpaw, Ben Coker, Martin Pataki, Taylor Armand, Mark Johnston, Twisted Scrote, Mitchell Mann, Simon Gulliver, Andy Capped, Andrew Dalton, Johan Eriksson, David Page, Conformist, Jake Elwich, L. O'Brien, Keith Barlow, Romeo, Peter Sidon, Grant Butler, Vichardi, Tiago Pereira dos Santos Silva dos Santos Silva, Olaf Albin, Dragon Sex Master, Joel Hartman, Phil Taprock, Jamie Hampshire, Lee Norris, Tim Lintz, Robert Kelly, James Malloy, John Davenport, Jamie Davenport, Jan Vilton, Olaf Jonsson, James Halliday, Marco, Gianni Jaquetta, Richard Barrow, Hagenator, Radek, Ken Barraclough, Alvaro Gonzalez, Stephen Hornsby, Jan Best, Robin Banks, Dan Rusko, Christian Earnshaw, Terry Anderson, Francesco Pimenta, Kev Gilmore, Alexander Green, Thomas Daniels, Greg Olson, Mark Johnson, Stuart Ashen, Lee Harris, James Id, Novel, Gerard Morris, Mike Siegler, Mark Brooks, Russell Hugo, Paolo Leary, Graham Kamak, Scott Mitten, Nicole Ketchum, Ninth Demon, Ludwig Holmstrom, and John Ezell. Thank you all so much for giving it the full gun over the whole 90 minutes, you've certainly earned your half time tea and a banana. Okay so the next video will be the, I guess third part to the whole Jack Tramiel saga, his last stand, an account of his time with Atari, and that's going to be pretty damn good I'm hoping, so look forward to that, but for now I shall see you on the other side, wherever you are, whoever you be, have a good one, take care, and I will see you, well not on the other side, but next time, bye for now.